Yeah. After the after the, after the interview or after the party, I would just go and start working. You mm -hmm. know, that's why I was always was not really drinking, yeah. doing anything. I was always sober, just dancing like mm -hmm. for hours on the dance floor because I knew that I have to go back to the university at eight o'clock. Yeah, and, <laughs> or um, just uh, or just later when I started working as a, as, as a doctor. Uh, yeah. So my patients are we yeah. with a very uh, oh you're a good rooster oh, yeah. I, you know what it is so incredible <laughs> because I'm telling I'm gonna tell you I'm a re I'm a rooster like all my character is like this guy like you know this guy who likes <laughs> to have some like, good time and people people watch him yeah. and stuff like that I go and sleep any night at wow. night and just make music and then post on my space under my other name. Mm -hmm. And like watch what people would say. I was I felt really really comfortable oh, taking all these you. pictures with you and talking to you. Thank you and so much. Felt like I was lot. talking to an old friend. You know mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. And when you feel good. Yeah. Hi, today I'm here with Nina Kravitz. Hello. <laughs> so you were born in Irkutsk, right? Do that's you have that's some? That's correct. <laughs> Do you have some memories when you were growing up there? Mm, of course, it's like half of my life. I mean, yeah. I a, a huge part of my life yeah. was spent there, so of course I do have mm -hmm. some memories. Yeah, uh, for sure. It was very colorful. Mm -hmm. It was full. Of, it was very eventful, and uh, I had a very um, happy childhood. Yeah, but of course, not, not without some really crazy stories and yeah. some dramas and some quite big dramas sometimes that would probably like isolate me with school for one, yeah for like for one year or something there was oh. a few dramas yeah i was like not really uh you know gregarious girl something mm -hmm. like that i was kind of an outsider oh. always and um you know if you yeah. were a kid and kids are you know i wrote a song in 2000 I think I released one. It was one of my first records, "Pain in the Ass," and one of the line in the song is, um, "Kids are really brutal." I will tell you, yeah. you find certain fun, and then the rest. So, mm -hmm. yeah, kids are really brutal, and I don't. I actually think ge it doesn't really depend on uh, ge where are you yeah. from geographically. It's just yeah. like a, a, a true fact. Mm -hmm. There's something in them that. And just from like to yeah. exercise their power and aggression and yeah, stuff like that. and from a young age, you're already really into reading, right? I was into yeah, I was into reading. Actually, I was more into listening. Oh, I was more into listening for sure. Like in like, school or listening um, to? This, I, I was I really loved talking. Um, I was never really good in the math. Mm -hmm. uh, I had uh, everything that has to do with calculating, programming. Knowing something for sure, um, factology, yeah, you know, being able to calculate the distance and like uh, this is something that I never really was um, um, good at. But yeah. I was really good at it, something abstract and in, in being able to create some kind of a story. I loved history, biology, oh. um, physics, yeah. chemistry. Yeah, so it was. I was like really into this kind of. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm in Los Angeles, <laughs> California, yeah. United States, and wearing this gorgeous <laughs> sweater. It's so nice. The blue like suits you so well. It is. That's what I thought. So I thought I just wear it. Not like it anyway. But I think it has been enough. Really. <laughs> so. Um, and your mom uh, was teaching, was it English or she was teaching, she's in university, right? She is, she's a high school, like university oh. teacher of English and then she yeah. did like a second uh, degree. Uh, she became a psychologist oh. with a touch of sociology. So yeah. She did a, a, like a work. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you guys say it in English, but like dissertation, you know. Oh, okay, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like a scientific uh, mm -hmm. work, research on uh, obstacles that people, or barriers, language yeah. bar barriers that people meet mm -hmm. on the way of learning something. Yeah. Some, some and what about your dad? Language. Aprende. <laughs> so, um, and my dad is an engineer. Oh. He is. 
really amazing person. I yeah. love him very much. Well, yeah, mom, you I like used to discuss music with him when you were growing I, I up. I still do. Oh, you know? wow. Just like I came back home recently. I'm really close to my parents. Yeah. And there was no one else uh, in the world that I was uh, trusting, mm -hmm. feeling really loved by. But then and then it's just like all my favorite people in the yeah. world. Yeah. Sure. But um, just recently I went back to Moscow and. That's where they live now, mm -hmm. and I mean we still have some 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 something in in Siberia, but we go there from time to time. It's really far away; it's like five hours by yeah. plane. So it's like from the late to oh, New York. Oh, true, or, yeah. Um, and um, we were just sitting at home, and my my, my father he keeps all my records, like what I released, mm -hmm. um, and especially my album really likes the cover and uh, yeah. the album itself and it, it found it himself like a very nice spot mm -hmm. uh, on the shelf um, so we decided to listen to my album and I actually didn't, haven't done it since a long long time since probably the, the, the time it was released like in 2012 or 2013 I think that was the last time I actually listened to my album mm -hmm. again so that was a very interesting Yeah, experience. it brought back some memories. Yeah, because my parents really, really like it. And uh, my father was like listening to it and it's like, hmm. It was this kind of emotional moment. Mm -hmm. And he says, it's, it's, it's time for a new one. Yeah. It? And uh, it's really interesting to feel that something has passed us. And uh, after so many years, to listen to it again and to realize that you still like it and that it was written by somebody that you are not anymore, mm. like some other yeah. person. And that person has already changed a million times. It's yeah. It's an interesting experience. Mm. So your parents have always been really supportive of the beginning when you were doing music <coughs> for your career? Yeah, or? I mean, the thing is that... Um, Doing music was not the first decision. Yeah. A uh, big decision that I was made. It was actually kind of a collateral decision uh, on my way to uh, become a doctor. Yeah. And I actually spent quite a lot, a lot of time in the university, and I finished it. And yeah. I worked as a dentist. Yeah. Um, what actually about dentists did you love that you wanted to do it initially? You know, I actually wanted to, people to feel better. You know, mm -hmm. I, I was my, you know, when I was um, in, in just about to finish school, my parents were thinking, well, what, what was going to, what would be better for me yeah. to, what kind of profession mm -hmm. would be ideal for me, and we were just discussing it um, until the moment that they actually all, all my family uh, they already always noticed about me that I. Uh, when someone doesn't feel well, mm. I tend to be really sensitive to it, and I um, mm -hmm. really have a lot of empathy mm -hmm. to people and um, try to help them out and feel really bad when someone's ill. Yeah. So, um, and now, like, since I was a child, I was always, always trying to find something to mm -hmm. cheer somebody yeah. up or make it better or something like that. So, that so was kind of the, the ultimate decision that I would be the best in, you know. Um, field of um, medicine yeah for sure, yes and um, actually I really I, I think it was a good decision even though after some time um, after been, I've been living this double life you know since a very early age, <laughs> early age yeah. I've been like going to the university uh, um, studying and then I would do journalism like you and yeah. I would be a DJ, I would move to Moscow later on and there would be like double life, sometimes yeah. triple life, people wouldn't know what I would, would be doing at night mm -hmm. or and night people wouldn't be knowing <laughs> what I was doing. But yeah. after the after the, after the interview or after the party I would just go and start working, you mm -hmm. know. That's why I was always I was not really drinking, yeah. doing anything. I was always sober, just dancing like mm -hmm. for hours in the dance floor because I knew that I have to go back to the university at eight o'clock, yeah. and <laughs> or um, just uh, or just later when I started working as a, as, as a doctor, uh, yeah. 
to have patients are waiting for me. So I was working as at the Hospital of Veterans of War. Oh, okay. It was like um, quite an institution. Mm -hmm. They were not joking about anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was studying, yeah. I had this really, really iconic teacher, dental uh, uh, surgery. Okay. So that was like this really, really uh, tall, uh, majestic, like Jewish man with a very deep voice. Mm -hmm. Really amazing guy. I will never forget him. And he was so strict that even if you enter the class one second after the mm -hmm. curfew, you know, you're absent. Even though you're there, you, know, oh, you could enter. You're welcome. Strict. But then still, you 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 kind of you finish three mm -hmm. hours through academic hours class, yeah. and then you get out of class without actually being there. Mm -hmm. So and, and in a dental school, you know you you would go, and you would have to repeat every missed class like a oh. minute by minute. Yeah. So there's no way you miss like some classes and then you just read and learn about it and then go pass a test or something. No, you yeah. have to really go and. Like repeat the class yeah. in the actual time that you have missed. Mm -hmm. um, well, where did the uh, characteristic come from that you're able to be so driven in so many different things? Are your are your parents' personalities like that too? Um, yeah, I think I'm a combination of uh, my parents' personalities. Yeah. So, whereas my mom is very like grounded, stable, very logical, mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, very pragmatic person yeah. with a very uh, oh look a rooster oh, yeah. <laughs> I, you know what it is so incredible because I'm telling I'm gonna tell you I'm a re I'm a rooster like all my character is like this guy like you know this guy who likes <laughs> to have some like, good time and people people watch him yeah, and stuff like that so cute that's totally like him that's yeah, your that's spirit true. animal your rooster yeah. <laughs> We finally so, found out um, they're also really tasty, really <laughs> yummy, but we're not talking about it now. Um, basically, yeah, I'm, I'm a combination of that a little yeah. bit, and I'm um, a very eccentric person, and, um, mm -hmm. very on the go, and I do things by the eye, yeah. by the ear, sorry, by, <laughs> by the ear, by ear, and um, <coughs> um, very spontaneous and emotional. You know, mm -hmm. Sometimes I cannot control my feelings. I'm yeah. a total um, extrovert in that sense. But mm -hmm. at the same time, <coughs> sorry, I can be very, very introverted mm -hmm. and um, could be antisocial and um, really, really uh, the opposite of what I could be, uh, what I would be like a night before or something mm -hmm. like that, depending on uh, on the outside, yeah, uh, surrounding. I, I'm really, really sensitive to that. Mm. Like, yeah. um, I think you know, t if you talk about that, the best example would be, <coughs> you know, the photography, for example. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can have like the best cameras, the most uh, reputable photographer, and like a great team, stylist, <coughs> the light, but you know. Something wouldn't wouldn't be quite ideal. There would be something in the energy, in the communication that wouldn't just make mm -hmm. it, because the person is looking through his lens, and what comes out on the picture yeah. is actually what he sees and how he sees you. And <coughs> the same thing comes out from the, from the model or from somebody who is photographed. Both people are really immersed in something that they're surrounded by mm -hmm. at this particular moment and that's what you actually see yeah on the picture and that and when the connection is great and people the level of comfort like this mutual comfort is um, enough you see a great picture yeah yeah you see like the energy like you see the emotion you see the power mm -hmm. of the shot you know? yeah i know what you mean like extraction of the moment but when this isn't there, there's nothing, yeah. you know? It's mm -hmm. just, I guess, <coughs> like this, it has a lot to do with what's inside me, what's, mm -hmm. in what's outside of what's going on. Yeah. And maybe it's because I'm an artist, so mm -hmm. an artistry kind of 
it's included in, yeah. in the <laughs> idea of the artistry that yeah. you gotta be sensitive and you gotta be like a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. What was the, was there a moment in time you would say that you, um, it clicked to you that you wanted to do music for your life? Um, I think for about, I mean, for many years, I was just doing it as something to distract my, you know, I, it was also really, really important for me, there's those counterpoints, you know, mm -hmm. like you do something and then you also have to do something else, so you don't fully, you're not fully immersed in something that is in front of you. It's very important to have this little space mm -hmm. where you can relax and do something completely else. So that's what music for me. Music was just like the area of absolute comfort for me where I would be entirely free from myself at first. Mm -hmm. From all the, uh, you know, psychological uh, obstacles that a teenager might yeah. have, you know. I think that every teenager has a few of them. Mm -hmm. And um, all my dreaming and all my uh, visualization of what I would, would want to do would be happening when I would be listening to music, like imagining things. And in fact, the first time, first years, because I was too young mm -hmm. to fly, to go out, couldn't really also afford it, to be honest. Um, coming from Siberia, but I would imagine how it was it in Detroit and Chicago, mm. or how was it in the go to be at a party, you know. Yeah. And I actually sometimes am, am, I feel amazed uh, that those pictures, they actually matched pretty well mm -hmm. what I saw oh, a long time ago. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, I think I've been doing so many different things and I was also doing different things musically and I was in a band mm -hmm. and became... Um, My so space rocket. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> First, I was, uh, you know, I was just um, uh, uh, collecting records, teaching, helping the host, host artists, mm -hmm. the promotional agency. Um, cause, you know, it's, mo when I moved to Moscow, it was quite tough. It's a big city, and <clears throat> it was difficult to meet my and my ends meet yeah. to, to make my ends meet. You know, so mm -hmm. I had to do all these different jobs, but this was really fun. It's a lot of fun, and uh, one of the jobs was just you know taking care of the artists. A lot of the jobs were the job would be um, to write a little bit here and there about music, doing interviews. Mm -hmm. That's how I met a lot of people. Oh. I had an incredible, inspiring conversations um, with some of the greatest people uh, in music, you know, including like Grace Jones, like Jeff Mills that time, mm -hmm. or Juan Atkins, or. Genesis Piorich or some really, really wide range of music, mm -hmm. musical heroes, so like Ann Fletcher from The Fish Mode or something like that. And everybody I would meet that time, I was like a sponge, you know, they would influence something in me and it would start some micro engine going you know, inside of me. So I would go like that and my like improvement as an artist would, would be just happening slowly here and there and at some point I became a songwriter and front singer of the, of the band mm -hmm. Space Rocket. and then at some point I also went to Red Bull Music Academy and yeah. it was a great experience oh, but, but during all this time I was continuing playing music which was not techno at all, it was more like 70s, 60s soundtrack music, mm -hmm. um, is listening, funk, rare grooves. I was also doing some funk party and singing on top of it. Oh. And also like the, D, um, the during my DJ sets, I would sing on top a lot. And that kind of never really left me. I like perform at first place. I like to perform. I, I'm not really mixing records, I'm playing them like, literally living within every record that I play. Mm -hmm. I have a physical connection, emotional connection with that. And I music really has to go through me. So I so there is some kind of a sensation, a result. Mm -hmm. you know, I need to really enjoy it. Yeah. And at some point um, I left the band because I didn't really feel there was 
uh, anything going on and we, there was also already my first 12 inch with them released on Greg Wilson's label something around 2007 and then I became uh, I, I started making music on my own that was really really inspiring it was actually quite shocking that I could really yeah so it was just so like within the first three years three months I'm sorry and since I started doing music yeah. on my own, I was like so amazed that I don't need anybody, like no band, to actually create songs mm -hmm. and to record them. Yeah. With this minimalistic setup yeah. that I had. Or could afford one synthesizer, like a microphone, and mm -hmm. like nothing else. But a computer. And I was just like, I was constantly posting music on MySpace, which at that time was pretty still big mm -hmm. and influential yeah. and I was like, I wouldn't sleep any night at wow. night, just like, make music and then post on MySpace under my other name, Dame Bayer, mm -hmm. and like watch what people would say. And then at some point, after half, and a, half a year of leading this really weird life without actually sleeping much, wow. doing all these jobs, being completely, still doing dentistry, I actually got signed on an American record label, Underground Quality. And then a few months later, I was I also got a offer to release my other 12-inch Dan and Ass, and I'm gonna get to mm -hmm. on um, English label Ricketts. Yeah, and it was really successful both of them. And with <clears throat> underground quality record, that kind of it was like a window for me into this kind of underground house. Um, scene, let's say, it's called like this, the small, really mm -hmm. closed scene of house musicians. And then the other record was more like really open, completely different. Um, put my name to a completely different crowd. Yeah. But in the end, I I made, I started playing complete music that was has nothing really to do with what I was doing mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as, a, as a composer, as a producer. And in 2012, I released my album, and that's slowly, like step yeah. by step. So basically, I kind of my breakthrough was through my music. Mm -hmm. I love really as a DJ, and and then I started playing uh, as a DJ worldwide. And it took me a few years to mm -hmm. really like yeah. learn how to be a performer. You know how to travel and be able to deliver some kind of a show mm -hmm. and. Took some time, and now it still feels very exciting. Yeah. Every time I go somewhere, wow. you know, I take take the flight. You know, it feels like mm -hmm. child. Yeah. <laughs> like oh, we're going somewhere. Going somewhere. <gasps> yeah. Trip. You know? <laughs> trip. <laughs> that but is even more important than yeah. the trip itself. But just this preparation and anticipation of the of the trip. That is exciting. How do you think your music has changed from the early songs you put out? You know, it's actually a really interesting question because <clears throat> even though, you know, my I always like um, different music, mm -hmm. just, um, not even even outside of electronica. Yeah, I always like rock, pop, uh, like electronica, um, techno, acid. I was like this genre was um, was always like next to me, mm -hmm. by me. It's like a late motif of through throughout the whole um, path so far. It's something that I have been rediscovering and just like been really keeping next to me since the very very beginning. And my I feel like my love for electronic music kind of started with mm -hmm. uh, hearing an acid track by Armando on the radio. So and after so many years, this is like it still makes my my hair is dead. Oh, you know, like, goosebumps! Oh, and, like, yeah, and there's still areas. <laughs> yeah. It's really rich, so called, not even the genre, but like a social mm -hmm. phenomenon. Social, music, musically, so. Okay, social, musical, mm -hmm. social, musical phenomenon as acid. Yeah. You know, that transcend, transcendent generation, which is actually. It's 30 years. Since the first S track it came out. Oh wow! Ah, anniversary. Been... Thirty years. Wow. That's... Can you imagine? So, wow. 
And what is most amazing is that <laughs> we're in the country yeah. that has that, that record was released. Yeah. We're not in, like, exactly in the state where it happened, but mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> the celebration still. Actually, yeah, there, in the lay, there. Um, I'm not mistaken, there was also like a lot of great records released and uh, a lot of acid mm -hmm. music locally, like DJ Hyperactive, for yeah. example. Uh, one of my favorite first records I got, I got my, that kind of uh, got into my collection was his record Venus on, uh, uh, on this missile record mm -hmm. label from Minneapolis, I think. <laughs> really, I still play it. I still feel like, like so many years ago. It's still, yeah. And I played it. I remember my first gig in the club mm -hmm. after three records. There was absolutely nobody on the dance floor. Yeah. Nobody. Everybody left. What? Because it was so hard. It yeah. was like I really liked that kind of music, and I didn't really understand why nobody liked it in the club that night. But you know. Everybody left, and then there was like a big break mm -hmm. since I would play a, a techno set again in the club. And I promised to myself that I would have, that's gotta be the last time, the first and last time, when I actually cleared the dance floor. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I kind of kept my <laughs> promise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, this is, um, of course, but saying all that, mm -hmm. saying all that, that being said, I think, regardless of the maybe like the change of BPM, the progression of, of genres, you know, the, the, of me discovering new things and, of course, getting more and more educated, and you know how it happens when you step on uh, one stair, like one more step on the stairs, you yeah. know, your horizon widens. You see more things that you haven't mm -hmm. been. Even think you didn't wouldn't think it even existed, you know. Yeah. So that's exactly what has been happening. But the interesting point, just to round mm -hmm. my long, long introduction, I think in terms of texture and mm -hmm. in terms of mm, the feeling, you know, behind music, my music hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. I could still play the same records that I was playing 10 years ago or 5 years ago and I would totally find them a place in, in, a, in, a con in the right context. Yeah. So for me the music is just a continuum that um, where the genres and um, generations coexist and where the, the notion of time doesn't really... Um, exist either it's just just somewhere there on the back of your mind that yeah there is this big time gaps in between mm -hmm. this genre and the other and probably the people that are in front of you they are not aware yeah of the two that you just dropped which was enough rightfully because it, it was made 30 years ago mm -hmm. But it feels amazing, and I feel like it's all connected, you know, and it feels like this, the time has just doesn't exist at this particular moment, and I'm able to, like a time machine, you know, like to mm -hmm. connect all these interesting points together. How do you think you've grown as a person since when you started? Um, pretty much the same as with my music, musical... Mm -hmm. um, improvement. If there's definitely always emotion uh, somewhere towards something. There is um, there is this sensation that something is happening and there is a sensation of the, the path being taken. But, like I said, with my music and my personality, I could still feel that the core of my personality or my music, like my, with my musical mm -hmm. taste, or what I feel, or how I was able to you know, make almost make choices when it comes to music. It's just based on this yes-no idea. Mm -hmm. Is it my thing? Yeah, it's my idea. Why? I don't really know why, but it just... This music is unpolished, you know, it's kind of a little bit unfinished. It leaves room for you to add something of your own in it, which is important, especially for a mm -hmm. DJ that, you know, makes 
makes all those songs sound coherent. Mm -hmm. And it's important that songs are not oversaturated with an idea or with some sound. Yeah. You get to blend them in and in between together and in between each other and the outcome would be still harmonical, mm -hmm. harmonically beautiful, you know? Yeah. So, it, yeah, it's like, a, it's, it's still me, still my yeah. core, it has not changed one time or inch or centimeter. Mm -hmm. Uh, depending on the metrical system, <laughs> we have yeah. centimeters, centimeters, and we yeah. have different things. <laughs> we have feet. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so I still have sometimes trouble to calculate. Well, yeah. uh, how many? Of so also Fahrenheit mm -hmm. and Celsius. But that's, that's okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I have definitely changed. Yeah. Which is a normal thing. Mm -hmm. But you say you're that, would be, that would be really weird, you know, the person wouldn't change like, yeah. throughout his life. It's kind of strange. Yeah. But um, still, I feel I feel like I'm being me. Yeah. <laughs> Which is just great. Yeah. Which is really amazing. That you just do your life choices, and you grow, and you you want to become a better person, yeah. better version of yourself on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Constantly read. You're hungry for some some new things, some, some knowledge. Yeah. To keep discovering and rediscover things. Mm -hmm. And uh, it feels wonderful when all those things align and you feel comfortable and balanced. Mm -hmm. I'm Libra. I've been yeah. born in October. <laughs> don't, mm -hmm. Please don't think that I'm in that kind of astrological. <laughs> no. You know. Mm hmm. No, not at all. I just know. I, yeah. Sometimes it's interesting because yeah. I'm Libra and Libras are always mm -hmm. a little struggling with finding the right balance. Would you say and you're religious? Yeah, I'm not religious, but I believe in, 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 in God. I, I, I believe in the idea that there is something out there that is bigger than you. Mm -hmm. and everything you do and uh, it's, it's a great grounding mechanism that Mm, keeps you sane, I think, in your mind, it's because it's very difficult to for a person to manage its own his own uh, world. Yeah, mm, and many people are actually not that successful in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's the biggest uh, achievement that a person could have is that actually to get to know yourself well and to be in to 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 find friendship. Mm -hmm. With your own, and you know, to feel comfortable in yeah. your own body, and to feel everything you do, mm -hmm. and um, being able to be um, honest mm -hmm. with yourself and your own decision, but at yeah. the same time, accept accepting how you are, and um, not I'm not saying accepting like uh, not moving anywhere, not mm -hmm. changing things that obviously needs to be improved, not yeah. at all, but. Just talking about some kind of healthy relationship, some, some kind of a healthy growth yeah. <coughs> that's happening inside mm -hmm. of a healthy individual. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. does love mean to you? Love is everything, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. I think without the idea of love, the notion of it, um, <coughs> the Um, it's just an existence. Mm -hmm. I think through through love, uh, people are um, really re really realizing uh, releasing uh, the true meaning of being a human being. Mm. Um, and actually, as an artist, uh, that was like always in the front for me. Um, I want. I was always valuing. Um, a human behind artist or everything mm. that artist does. Um, I was never really into something, into some formulas, or especially in my world where sometimes the uh, performance, the DJ set is a little bit too um, mechanic and it's a bit too pre programmed and somehow put in this kind of more functional form, which I think. A little bit under, like, undervalues the, the what what the outcome that actually could be achieved through 
through it, you know, when you mm -hmm. play music or the open yeah. heart and when you're able to, to release your creative energy through mm -hmm. it's it's quite an astonishing thing yeah. when you can achieve it. It's, it's yeah. kind of not always happens, but when this unity and when the energy flows through you and you feel like one part of something that is happening. You know, that's what I'm saying, it's kind of right balance. You know, you are strong enough uh, to be a leader and a guide the people in front of you in some kind of direction. But at the same time, you're not too much mm -hmm. and you're not being an obstacle for yourself, you know, for this flow, uh, for this energetic flow to occur. And then it's like a, it's like a cycle. You give a lot and then you receive even more. And that's beautiful. That's yeah. really beautiful. As an artist, it's very um, important for me to be excited and um, for the, the story or something to have a mystery of not knowing what the outcome would be. Mm -hmm. So when you start doing something, you don't really know why you do it. Yeah. That's exactly the music I also like. Like when mm -hmm. I make a song, I don't really know why I made it. You know, mm -hmm. when some kind of subconscious mechanisms um, uh, guide you through this creative mm -hmm. process, yeah, uh, rather than something that you know, you know, you plan. Mm. It's all good, of course. Um, yeah. Same with you know, same with playing records or performing a song. Like it's of course you need to be skillful and you need to have a skill to yeah. be able to perform. You have to be very, very serious about it. Um, but if there is some kind of um, alteration and there's some kind of um, mistake or whatever, that's nice, you know, I like it. I like mm -hmm. to feel the, what people, what the artist feels when he mixes. I want to feel his physical connection with what he's doing. I don't want to see a mannequin, no, I want to see somebody who I want to feel from the music what the hell he's feeling right now. And I know that with the artists that I love, I know that they never play the same and that their performance would never feel even the same because of that. Because they will always put a little bit of themselves in what they're doing and you will be able to feel it with all your body, you know, with every cell. And that's like when you feel there's something really great happening and you don't even know what it is, are you or not, but it's just like a miracle. So there's something divine in it. Mm -hmm. and you feel this really true, unaltered, uh, unpolished something around that yeah. makes you like the person in front of you mm -hmm. and makes you not think who he is, what is his background. You just want to be next to the guy or the girl. Mm -hmm. We just yeah. want it together. I just want to just, just, you just want. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's really I amazing. Have, um, I really enjoyed it. Me I, too. I feel like I just started. Um, I really just started in all possible senses of this mm -hmm. sentence. But I also started to become really late for my flight, oh, which yeah. is about uh, one We're hour, cutting it close. Two minutes, I, and I have to go to. Ciudad de Juarez yeah. and play as a gig tonight in Mexico. So um, I thank you for your thank company. Thank you so much. I love I, everything. I, was, I felt really, really comfortable oh, taking all these pictures with you and talking to you. Thank you and so much. I felt like I was lot. talking to an old friend. You know, mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. And when you feel good, yeah. you just feel good. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm so happy. Thank you so much, really. And I wish I could just stay more and talk, talk. I just started t saying something important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, round like two. Is, There'll be yeah, round two. Another part of the maybe world. Maybe next time. <laughs> and thank you so much. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Bye.